Hi, I'm Miley Oye. We're near one of the final steps in recovery of a hack site, clean and maintain. You've reached this step by having quarantined your site, verified ownership in Webmaster Tools, assessed the damage, and most recently, identified the vulnerability. Please be aware that this video, like many of the steps in our Help for Hack sites, requires extensive technical expertise. Also, if you don't have a clean, current backup of your site, this step may require more time depending on the size of your site and the extent of the damage. But I'm happy to report that much of your hard work from prior steps will soon be rewarded. For example, you might need to use features in Webmaster Tools. Great that you already verified ownership! You'll also begin addressing each of the issues you discovered during Assess the Damage. Then, you'll correct the vulnerability identified in the last step. This video starts with your site offline. Once all actions are completed, we'll end this video with tips on how to maintain a secure site before bringing your site back online. So in this step, you'll not only restore the good content and remove the bad content, but also correct the vulnerability and plan maintenance of a strong site. Without fixing the vulnerability and committing to security moving forward, your site may be susceptible to hacking in the future. Hopefully, by the end of this step, you'll be able to answer yes to the following questions. 1. Have I taken the proper actions if the cybercriminal obtained users' personal information? 2. Is my site running the latest, most secure version of software? 3. Have I removed all unnecessary or unused applications and plugins that could make my site more vulnerable in the future? 4. Did I restore my content and eliminate the hacker's content? 5. Did I fix the root cause vulnerability that allowed my site to be hacked? And last, number 6. Do I have a plan to keep my site secure? To answer the first question, if you recognized when assessing the damage that confidential user information may have been compromised, or if your site was part of a phishing attack, please consider any business, regulatory, or legal responsibilities before you begin cleaning your site or deleting any files. There may be larger implications of the damage beyond the technical considerations. For example, in cases of phishing, you may want to review the resources at antiphishing.org, such as their document, What to Do If Your Site Has Been Hacked by Fishers. Now, before we start cleaning your site, let me introduce the URL removal feature in Webmaster Tools. You might have noticed in a prior step, Assess the Damage, that the hacker didn't just vandalize existing pages, but created entirely new, user-visible URLs on your site. There may be no good reason for these pages to exist. Depending on the number of new, unwanted pages created, as well as the potential damage these pages could cause users, you may want to consider expediting their removal from Google search results. To expedite removal, log into Webmaster Tools and navigate to the URL removal feature. Here you can create a removal request for each of the new pages created by the hacker that you'll never want surfaced in search results. Avoid including any previously good pages that were only damaged by the cybercriminal. You'll want these pages appearing in search results once they're cleaned up. URL removal is only for pages you'll never want surfaced in results. For faster processing by Google of your clean pages, meaning pages that are either new or newly updated, you can use the Webmaster Tools Fetches Google feature with Submit to Index. And to keep the pages submitted through URL removal from ever appearing in search results, make sure that once your site is further cleaned, it's configured to return a 404 file not found response for the unwanted URLs. Now let's get started actually cleaning up your servers. If you have a recent clean backup of your site, that's great. Furthermore, if you successfully identified the vulnerability that caused the hack, even better. Cleaning your site will be far easier because of your diligence in maintaining a backup and determining the vulnerability. We'll first cover the process for those with a current clean backup, and then the process for those without any backup at all, and last, the process for those with a recent but not current backup. If you have an up-to-date clean backup, go ahead and restore it. Once the good content is in place, be sure to correct the vulnerability. Be sure that all issues found in the earlier step, assess the damage, have been addressed. Then perform one last change of passwords just as you did when you quarantined your site. Change the passwords for all accounts related to the site, such as logins for FTP access, database access, system administrators, and CMS accounts. In terms of long-term maintenance, it's great to continue making regular, automated backups of your site and to be vigilant about keeping software updated 
password strong, and all devices used to log into the machine secure. Once you have a security plan, feel free to bring your site back online and proceed to the next step, request a review. Now, for those of you with no backups at all, cleaning your site is far more lengthy. If you have a clean backup, but it's outdated, please continue to pay attention because several of these instructions apply to your situation as well. For those with no backups, by the end of this video, we'll perform a completely fresh install of your OS, CMS, database, and all applications. To do this, we'll first make backups of your site, even though it's still infected. Second, working directly on one of the backups, not your site itself, We'll clean the files, correct the vulnerability, and then eventually copy the clean files to a freshly installed server. Let's begin by making not one backup, but two, even though your site is still infected. Having an extra backup will help recover accidentally deleted content, or allow you to revert and try again if things go awry. Label each backup with infected for future reference. Ideally, one of your backups will be a disk image or a clone version of your site. This format makes restoring content even simpler. You could leave the disk image aside for an emergency. The other backup will be a file system copy from your server, including images and media files. If you have a database, back up the database as well. If you don't have a disk image, make two backups of the database and two backups of the file system. Using the file system copy and the database copy if you have a database, will work to clean the content. The time spent restoring your content depends on the size and complexity of your site, and your thorough findings from the earlier step assess the damage. Let's correct the file system first. The hacker may have adjusted file and folder permissions to be more permissive. For example, a file may show 777, World Writable Access. If your earlier investigation found too lenient file permissions, go ahead and correct them now. Again, we're working on the backup copy, not the server itself. Then, also on the backup copy, clean all files corresponding to the URLs discovered as compromised from our prior step, assess the damage. These may be server configuration files, JavaScript, HTML, PHP. Make sure to also remove the new files created by the hacker, which you submitted to Webmaster Tools URL removal. Be sure to correct the vulnerability too, especially if it exists in your code or cracked passwords. Input validation libraries or security audits can be a further help in this regard. If your site has a database, begin cleaning up hacker-modified records in your backup. Just before you think you're done, perform a sanity check on some of the records to make sure you're good to go. At this point, you've likely turned the once infected backup of your site into a copy with only clean data. Keep this clean copy on the side and begin cleanup of your infected servers. To increase security and to simplify future maintenance, consider whether you can eliminate software on your server, such as widgets, plugins, or applications that the site no longer uses. Then, on your server, we recommend performing a clean installation, not just an upgrade. Upgrades may leave files from a previous version. If an infected file remains on the server, another hack is more likely to occur. The fresh installation should include the OS if you're in control of the server, and all software applications such as the content management system, e-commerce platform, plugins, templates, etc. Please be sure to check for available security updates and patches. Once your server is ready, upload only the known clean files and restore your clean database. Make sure the upload maintains the appropriate file permissions and doesn't overwrite the freshly installed system files. Then, once again, change the passwords for all accounts as you did in the earlier step. Quarantine your site. Let's pause for a minute to help those of you with a recent, but not current, clean backup. As just described for sites with no backups, consider making a backup of your current site, even though it's still infected. Mark the copy as infected to distinguish it from the others. Because you have an older, existing clean backup, you can actually restore the most recent copy on your server rather than perform a fresh install. Just don't forget to upgrade. Then, with the upgraded clean but not current copy on your server, perform a site diff, either manually or in an automated fashion, between the server's information and the current infected copy. Upload any new, clean content you'd like to preserve from the infected copy onto the upgraded server. Make sure the vulnerability is corrected and that each URL you listed from Assess the Damage has been addressed. Then change the passwords for all accounts. Now all sites, regardless of their initial status with backups, should be just about ready. The only thing left to do is devise a plan for maintaining a secure site. 
There are many great resources on the web for strong site maintenance. A few things we'd like to recommend are strong passwords, prioritizing regular backups, updating all software, and making sure the computers used to log into the site have an updated operating system and browser. If you can answer yes to, have I taken the proper actions if the cyber criminal obtained users' personal information? Is my site running the latest, most secure version of software? Have I removed all unnecessary or unused applications or plugins that could make my site more vulnerable in the future? Did I restore my content and eliminate the hacker's content? Did I fix the root cause vulnerability that allowed my site to be hacked? And do I have a plan to keep my site secure? Then go ahead and bring your clean site back online. I'll see you in the next step. Request a review.